Just to prove that this is really an international motor show, we have a Mexican and a Geordie that went to Sweden to produce an amazing looking car that was launched here in Detroit. How's all this come about? You made a rash promise, didn't you, last I year? I did. I came here a year ago and I stood here. I was pushed to the front and they said, uh, oh, introduce the 850R to the Americans. I said, well, it's, it's all about performance and uh, handling and things. You know, the design really isn't much changed, but uh, I had 20 minutes to talk about it. So I quickly finished off that and I had plenty of time left. And uh, I started talking about maybe the future and what we could do and what we will do. And I started to make some rash promises about uh, cars for Volvo's future. So we had to come back with something this year. I promised I'd be back and here we are. And you've got quite a few to show as well. Absolutely. So what happened next? You both live away from home. You're based in Gothenburg. You went back to the pubs of Gothenburg, did you? Sat there, had a few beers. Yeah. Do you actually do that? Do you go out and do you talk to people and do you ask them what kind of things they want in a car in the pub in Gothenburg? Not just, yeah, certainly Gothenburg, but wherever we go, we want to find out where are the, the nightclubs, the places, meet people, the locals, and find their tastes. That's definitely, we do that. We yeah, we, we, we like to get in touch with our customers, customers yeah. of the future, of course. Yes, and uh, yeah, we find them all over the place. And uh, they're always very interested in what we do, and then we were able to ask them their opinions. And uh, it's very important. We, we're lucky enough to travel the world on a regular basis, so uh, we do tend to meet an awful lot of people. In the past, um, you've not been known for a sort of fantastic design. It's been more the kind of IKEA flat pack, really, hasn't it, than the... <laughs> But this time you really have produced something quite stunning. Was it hard work to get the people at Volvo to move away from that traditional line? Because the, the whole line of, of the vehicle now is totally different, isn't it? Well, it is in some models. Um, and it wasn't difficult to persuade people that there was time for something different. But, uh, you see, we've been very good at producing cars that people need at some time in their lives, especially when they have a family. And uh, the Volvo estate cars have been really the, the, the real family car. And they have very upright sides and a vertical rear door and a very flat roof. And in fact, it's really a box. But what's better than a box for carrying everything you need? Now, in a car such as this coupe or the convertible here, it's not a car you need. It's a car you want, something to desire. Mm -hmm. And uh, you don't need to use the same design language as we do on the, the more boxy type or the, the family car for a car that people will use maybe before they have a family or maybe after the, the family has left. Yeah. But uh, of course we do design our coupes and cabriolets to make sure that four adults can fit in. So you can have one when you've still got a family. You really have paid great attention to detail on this, Jose, haven't you? The interior on this car is quite stunning. Has that been your department? Yes, that's right. It's, it's paramount. Uh, as you know, today people spend a lot longer in their cars. There's no doubt about that. And, and we want them to feel just like in your lounge or favorite room in your house. And a car like this, it must be just top, top suit, if I put it that way, or top dress. People must feel just good to be there. Can you tell me about this amazing sound system as well that's in there? Yes, part of this, the concept on this car is all about uh, joy of life. And we find, uh, and we found through marketing studies Music is very important in cars of this type, so we felt, let's put the best system that we can install. We have 14 speakers in this car, mm -hmm. two of which are actually positioned in the rear seat, behind your back. Mm -hmm. So you don't feel just the hear music. the sound, you feel the music. It's <laughs> fantastic, yes. And it all goes to make a, a very sexy package, which is something that Volvo aren't, a word you don't use with them. Safety is a word that you would use. Have you forgotten the safety, or is that still paramount? No, absolutely not. It's it's absolutely yes. You're right. It's paramount to Volvo. I mean, I've lived in in Sweden or worked in Sweden for about five years now, and I've got to know the people very well. And and quite frankly, because they care so much about other people and their environment, of course, they're a very caring society. It would have been totally impossible for a Swedish company, especially Volvo, to produce an inherently unsafe product. It's just not natural. So it, this caring attitude of Sweden has come through in the products for many years now and safety is the way it's been shown. OK, one last question for you. Mm. Mike Rutherford has asked me to ask, how on earth did you get the sexiest woman in the world to appear in your video? <laughs> <laughs> and he said that had something to do with you. <laughs>
It's just the, the, the joy of life, you know, yeah. you, you, you need women around. Yeah. I have to say that. And I hope women feel the same, needing men around. Oh, so we, we, as, we, we as designers look at that way, and that reflects this so association of life. And the other thing you said was, do you still have a phone number? <laughs> she just happened to be passing by when we were making the film. I mean, uh, you know, it's just luck. Really. It was very lucky. I'll tell him yeah. that. He'll be devastated. Yes. Thanks okay. very much. Bye -bye. Thank you.